Hello YouTube, and thank you for joining me for a particularly nerdy uh, spirit review session. Um, no whiskeys today, no, not even any rums today. Today we're doing Pomace Brandy. Uh, one of my favorite categories, a very uh, overlooked category, one that brings enormous quantities of flavor, Some, sometimes not so good flavor, but lots and lots of flavor usually. Um, I have focused on the French variety, which is Mar. Um, but Palmas Brandy is made pretty much anywhere wine is made because it's made from basically wine making leftovers. Um, so today I've, I've got the, the most obvious entry in the category, which I've probably not done as much justice to as I should, uh, namely Grappa. I've got a Grappa here from Inga. Uh, and um, not it ain't just, it just, ain't just uh, France and Italy. We've also got some stuff from Greece, Cipro. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Cipro. Poro. Um, it's been a while since my uh, Attic Greek class, so I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Tsipro. Um, this is from Moscofiero, which, is a, which uh, uh, is a great indigenous Greek grape. grape. So we're going to taste through these. Um, just one time through. No, no need to sort of do neat and then add a little bit of water. Although I might add a drop or two just, to, just for fun. I'm going to go in order of ascending ABV on these. Oh, and I can smell them already. These just make me happy because they're, <laughs> they're so characterful and they don't really get that expensive. And, you know, you, you drag one of these to the party like no one else. No one else is bringing like, like a Mar or a Grappa to a party, so you're probably going to be the only one. All right, a uh, little drop of water, and let's get into these. Um, three, one, two, three. Okay, first up is the Grappa. This is from Lorenzo Inga, and it is a Grappa di Dolcetto. Dolcetto is a grape uh, you find in the Piedmont. Uh, Inga is based in the Piedmont. Um, can I get wine nerdy for a second? I mean, wh why not, right? Um, Dolcetto is one of those great sort of under the radar grapes you should be paying more attention to. Uh, especially like if, if um, okay, maybe you have a wine cellar and you've been aging away your cabs and Nebbiolos and Barolos uh, for quite a, lo a long time and they're now softened up and ready to drink. Or maybe, you know, some nights you're just running out to a restaurant, you ain't got time to, you know, shop around, you're just gotta, uh, or you're ordering off a wine menu, um, or you just gotta grab something from the store as quickly as you can. Dolcetto is a great, great one to, to run with because it works with a whole variety of foods. It tends to be earlier drinking, um, unlike Cabs, Nebbiolos, um, a lot of Sangioveses. Um, you can pretty reliably imagine that a, a Dolcetto that's a year or two old is kind of pretty much ready to go because they just, they're just they big grapes, they don't have a lot of tannin to them. Um, and they also work really well with food. They have like this lovely acidity on the back end and they work with a variety of foods. And they're not expensive. Th these are the ones uh, you drink um, while you wait for your Barolos and stuff to come around. So terrific grape. Um, if you're not drinking Dolcetto, you are totally missing out. Um, this is uh, a lot, there's a lot number on this somewhere. Yeah, L one seven three one zero D one zero colon zero eight. So I'm imagining this is a 2017 because of that D one seven part, but I really don't know. Um, in any case, it's, it's certainly you know not super recent. I bought this on a uh, on a closeout shelf. It was um, a little bit discounted, which was part of the appeal. But I also just wanted to try a. a Thomas Brandy from Dolcetto, because I like Dolcetto. Bottled at 40%, unfortunately, and I just know that's going to knock a few points off. All right, here we go. On the nose, ooh. Musky, very, it's very fruity, but it's a very musky fruitiness. Um, kind of a, uh, what is that? So cantaloupe, but like very musky cantaloupe. Um, A little hint, little hints of durian. Don't run away. Like just little, little hints of that sort of super stinky, uh, funky fruitiness. 
kiwi, a kind of generalized fructosey sweetness. And then like, what is that? Like a like an old dog, like a, a sweaty old dog that's been running around all day and that kind of smell, but nice. I mean, it's kind of vague due to the, the low strength here. I, th I imagine due to the low strength. I mean, it, it seems, it comes across as well made. And again, double distilled. I imagine in pot stills. Oh, I should correct something that I said in an earlier video. That's uh, in one of the earlier videos on something. I mentioned that I thought uh, gra all grappa was pretty much steam distilled. That is wrong. Legally, it has to be s distilled in a solid state, meaning you can't make a wash out of it. Um, so you're working basically with just with these bricks of, you know, solid pomace that have sort of fermented. Um, but technically speaking, steam, di steam distillation is not the only way to distill these, this stuff. You can, um, you can use some kind of double boiler setup. Uh, there's, there's a couple of different ways, but, um, what doesn't work is use uh, pumping a, a wash into a pot still or, or a, a simple normal column still as you normally would because, um, you're, you're basically going to, it's illegal, and if you just put the bricks of pomace in there, you're going to burn your, your pomace, and that will not taste nice. Uh, some grape stems, a little like, um, this is an odd one, but uh, like milk tea, like f really fruity milk tea. You know, this is the, the um, if you go to here at, to one of the milk tea places in Chinatown, you see people ordering these like, freaky colored fruity milk teas. That's kind of what this smells like. A little fruit cake in there too, like uh, grandma's fruit cake. Not bad, but I mean, you already knew I was gonna say this would be way better at like 45%. Way better, I can tell you that right now. Um, on the palate, here we go. Arrives fine, and then from there off, it just runs off a cliff. This is very short in my mouth. It does not extend back beyond the, my middle teeth. Um, it's very short and very clipped. The uh, the finish just falls off a cliff. Um, it's all and it's all towards the front of my mouth. Um, What's there is nice. You've got this sort of, again, kind of generalized fructose, fruit syrup kind of note, almost like a grape cola thing, like uh, like grape fago, except nice. Um, the cantaloupe is still there. There's still that durian note, again, but very subtle. Um, kind of strange chemically sweetness, like uh, like sweet and low. Um, Like um, kind of like a, a tropical fruit ice cream, like a kiwi mango ice cream. Um, little hints of plastic smoke, which remind me of rum agricole. Actually, a lot of this reminds me a little bit of, of rum, rum agricole. A couple of like just little grape stems, a little greenness in there, and that's about it. That's kind of all I'm getting. Well made, pleasant, very nice, but this needs way better presentation. It just does. Um, Forty percent is not cutting this. It is not doing this justice. Uh, I would give this seventy-nine out of a hundred. Seventy-nine, and I know this would leap up at least three points if we were bottled at forty-five uh, percent or so. Um, but 79 for right now, and uh, worth a try. I mean, if you can find it at a, at a, at a reasonable price. Um, would go very pleasantly with espresso. All right, moving on. To the Cipro. Uh, Ips. Um, I was saying this fine off of camera. Ipsicaminos, uh, single variety grape mar spirit, 
Cipro. Um, and uh, okay, so this is um, made from Moscofiro, which is a white grape um, made in Greece, grown in Greece very high, uh, uh, I should say. Um, tends to be grown at high altitudes. Let me talk about um, Moscofiro a little bit. Basically, if you are like me and you're consistently disappointed that Pinot Grigios available around the $15 price point, um, Moscofiloro is definitely a wine you should seek out. What the, they're, they're, they're getting their, um, their pomace here from Skouras, which is one of the uh, terrific um, Moscofiloro producers. The head distiller here at Ipsikamnos is uh, uh, C. Spilipio. <laughs> Spil Spiliopoulos. Um, and it is distilled and bottled by Verino S.A. in Argos, Greece. Um, and bottled at 44% ABV. Here we go. Sorry for butchering the Greek there. I should be better at this. Like, I went to grad school. I learned out of Greek. I should be able to pronounce this stuff. All right, here we go. Distilled in, in copper alambics, and you can tell on the nose. Yeah, here we go. I mean, okay, if, so if you know what Muscofiloro smells like, this really smells like Muscofiloro concentrate. That isn't going to help any of you who haven't had this stuff, but I just want to note that up front. I mean, so we're getting musty kind of stone fruit, nectarine, lychee fruit, a certain kind of like oily uh, smokiness. Reminds me a little bit of Viognier, like good Viognier. Intense, intense yellow flowers. Um, very floral. Actually, this just, I mean, wait, let me back up. There, There is a yellow flower, and I cannot remember the name of it because I'm bad with flowers. There is a yellow flower that smells exactly like this. Exactly like this. This smell, this just smells like I am sticking my face into a bunch of those flowers and then sniffing them. That's what I'm getting. What's the name? Doesn't matter. Moving on. Um, a little plum, a little gooseberry. Um, a little bit of like a pear brandy sort of a note. So, so pear, but like pear eau de vie. And expensive hand lotion is another note in this. Uh, and now that I'm, I mentioned it, I can't stop getting it. Yeah, it really just smells like you, you spent 20 bucks in a little tiny bottle of something at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond and you squirted a whole bunch in your hands and you, you, know, and you just kind of smelled that. So we're talking like yellow flowers and hand lotion is what I'm getting. Um, and I love it. This is really nice. Um, and it's just more, I mean, you smell this side by side with the Inga. Yeah, and it's just... It's, it's so clear the difference that good presentation makes. I mean, the, the basic set of flavors in this is not so much more exciting than, it was, than what was going on with the little um, grappa, but this is just so much louder. It's so much more vivid. It's like getting a good um, master on a, on, a, uh, on a band's recording or something. That's, that's kind of what, I'm, what you're getting here. Way more vivid. All right, on the palate with this Cipro. Oh. That's a winner. That's a winner right there. Um, much more um, commanding in the mouth. Much, way more round. Goes far, far back in my mouth, uh, further back in my mouth. Um, and the finish just lingers and lingers and lingers with that, with this kind of nice, kind of oily smokiness that I was getting on the nose. Oh, this rocks. Um, again, I'm going to lead off with the, the sort of flower thing, the yellow flower. I really feel like I'm chewing delicious flower petals right now. That's kind of the flavor I'm getting um, leading off. Um, there's also some lychee fruit, 
hair uh, hand lotion again, but nice. So we're, we're, we're squirting some hand lotion in my mouth. Uh, Rubos, Rubos tea, um, some like peach, but it's more like peach skin. Like uh, you just kind of shaved off the skin and started chewing on that. Um, almost like a like a clay note, um, but it's like clay that's been mixed with a little bit of dirt. So it's like, and and it's like smoky. So it's like smoky, dirty clay. If, if that makes any kind of sense, very minerally. Uh, very serious. Um, some white pepper, too. Especially on the finish, the white pepper starts to come out. And there's a certain rusty note in there as well, kind of mingling with the minerality. So it's like a rusty rock. Um, really nice. Really well made. Um, I had marked this as an 84 on my sheet of notes down here. Uh, I'm gonna knock that up to 85. This is really good. This is quite good. Um, it's not as loud as a lot of other um, Pomus brandies that I've had. Um, but man, this just delivers on the details. It really does. It's just hit hitting all the all the bases with a kind of elegance and poise and it's it's delicious um it has a, a again a kind of dominating commanding presence in my mouth i enjoy drinking this that is very nice indeed 85 points out of 100 for the ips gaminos um cipro of mosca Fioro. well done greece all right moving on to our last option it's the mar uh, this is a Mar from Alsace, Mar d'Alsace, from Gewürztraminer. I have enjoyed these quite a lot in the past. Uh, Nussbaumer, um, uh, and uh, that's about, about all the information they're giving me. There's a little picture of an Alemic still right there, which kind of hints that this is made in a main nutritional Alembic, but um, it's not actually stated anywhere. So I don't really know. This was not that expensive, but I uh, figured it was worth a punt. Let's give this a shot. Um, both of these are probably bottled circa 2019 or so. I don't really know. There's no lot or anything, anything on there, but I'm guessing, you know, probably two, three years ago, they went into bottle. All right. Um, on the nose. Actually, probably the most muted of the three. Certainly the most, um, um, kind of, uh, linear and I don't want to say one dimensional. That might be a little bit mean. No, it's a little one dimensional. So I'm getting like a kind of smoky slash metallic pear thing. So take a pear and cover it in um, like uh, like solder and yeah, basically it's, that's what it smells like. Just cover a pear in solder and then smell it. A um, little lychee fruit, um, some white flowers, uh, kind of an herbal tea note, like not super nice herbal tea. This is something you bought like a like a box you bought in the supermarket, that kind of stuff. And that's about it. That's kind of all I'm getting. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really getting that much more from this. Hello? Anyone home? I mean, the, the, the metallic pear and the lychee fruit, they're home, but that's kind of about it. Oh, bottled at 45%, which is nice. I wish, I honestly wish I could have the, the Inga with this proof. Um, I think it would be a superior kind of spirit, but we'll, uh, I'm not giving this a chance on the palate. So let's let's see what happens there. On the palate with this Nussbaumer. Mm. 
tastes kind of like it smells. Um, which is tastes just say nice. A little bit linear. Um, again, one dimensional. But where this is winning out for me over the the gra the uh, the grappa, even though I think the grappa has a broader flavor profile, is this is just feels better in the mouth. This has lots and lots more texture, and it's just a little bit more vivid, even though there's less things going on. So we're talking um, lychee fruit is leading this time. Lots of lychee fruit on the arrival. Lychee fruit. And then the, the pear, the kind of pear smothered in solder, kind of metal pear, metal smoky pear thing, kind of carries through throughout the finish. Um, flowers. Um, flower smoke, like you, you set some flowers on fire um, at the same time. Um, white pepper, bosque pear. Um, and a little bit of that herbal tea thing. Um, that really brewed. It's more like you ripped open one of the tea bags and kind of stuff stuff the stuff in your mouth. Um, and again, what's what's making this kind of work for me is that it feels good in my mouth. Um, it's still got not as nice as the Sipuru, not by a long shot, but um, it just it has a little bit of a little bit of authority there. Um, but there's not really not much to this. Uh, I think this. Uh, how to explain this. I'm still going to give it a better score than the, the grappa. I would give this 81 points out of 100. This is kind of like the um, the, gra the Jurassic Park 3 of Pomace Brandies. Not, not Jurassic World. We're talking Jurassic Park 3. Um, not a bad movie. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, exciting. It's pretty much a long chase scene, uh, movie, movie length chase scene. Alan Grant comes back. They do some fun stuff with the Velociraptors. Uh, the only problem with it is you don't remember it, right? You've, you, you remember Jurassic World because that was an insult to your intelligence, um, but you do not remember Jurassic Park 3. That's kind of the problem with this. Like, is it fine, you know, when you have it after a meal with a shot of espresso? Absolutely. But you are not going to remember the event afterwards. Um, and, but it's not bad. This is not, this is okay. Uh, it sucks, but it's okay. All right, so what do we got here? Um, the winner by Miles is the Itsi Peru, followed by the Nose Bomber, followed by the Little Inga, which I think is just handicapped here. Um... Uh, 84, eight, I'm sorry, 85 points for the Cipro. Um, Nussbaumer gets an 81. The Inga Dolcetto gets a 79. And I really hope this comes back at higher strength because it just deserves better. Um, and that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching and cheers.